celebrate the, fifth, the vigil of the fifth Sunday in Lent. Uh, Saturday is also the Feast of the Immaculate Conception. I hope you can hear me in the back because my uh, lavalier, the mics, both of them aren't, aren't working. I don't know why. So can you hear me in the back? Yes. yes. Okay. How about now? <laughs> All right. Anyway, welcome to everyone here. Um, today we have some dear friends here, uh, Ernie and Mary Beth Seer and their family, and they are here to talk to us about the mission of Magella House, which we've mentioned before in this parish. But after, uh, towards the end of Mass, Mary Beth and Ernie will be coming up to speak to us about this wonderful mission. Let us begin this Mass and call to mind our sins as we ask the Lord for his pardon and his peace. Lord Jesus, you comforted Mary and Martha. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you wept for your friend. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you raised Lazarus from the dead. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins. Bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. By your help, we beseech you, Lord, our God. May we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love to the world, your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who is arranged with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, ever and ever. Amen. This Mass is being offered up to repose the soul of the deceased members of the Sparks family. Thank you. 
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, those who are in the flesh cannot please God, but you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the Spirit. If only the Spirit of God dwells in you, whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is alive because of righteousness. If the Spirit of the One who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the One who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also, through His Spirit dwelling in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, 
only about two miles away. And many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him. But Mary sat at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise. Martha said to him, I know he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord. I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who is coming into the world. When she had said this, she went and called her sister Mary secretly, saying, The teacher is here and is asking for you. As soon as she heard this, she rose quickly and went to him. For Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still <coughs> and met him. So when the Jews who were with her in the house comforting her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out, they followed her, presuming that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, fell at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews that had coming with him weeping, he began, became perturbed and deeply troubled and said, Where have you laid him? He said to him, Sir, come and see. And Jesus wept, so the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not the one who opened the eyes of the blind man have done something so that this man would not have died? So Jesus, perturbed again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay across it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the dead man's sister, said to him, Lord, by now there will be a stench, for he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you for hearing me. I know that you always hear me, but because of the crowd here, I have said this, that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out tied hand and foot with burial cloth and bands, and his face was wrapped in cloth. So Jesus said to him, Untie him and let him go. Now many of the Jews who had come to Mary and seen what he had done, believed, began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. This weekend, Pensacola Catholic High's Class of 71, celebrating 
uh, 52 years because they didn't get together last year. They're really celebrating 50 years. And so if there might be some of them here tonight, today of the most come to the 10 o'clock mass, there are one or two references to you in this homily. <laughs> when Jesus performs the miracle of raising Lazarus from the dead, crying out in a loud voice to the dead man in the tomb, Lazarus, come out. He gives proof to Martha and Mary, and to the many Jews who witnessed this miracle, and to you and to me, who believe in Jesus Christ as our resurrected Lord and Savior, that He is the resurrection, He <coughs> is the life, whoever believes in Him, even if He dies, will live. And everyone who believes in Him will never die. And Jesus Christ is our hope. Jesus Christ is our joy. Jesus performs this miracle to show that he has power over death. He performs it as a coming attraction to what would soon happen to him after his crucifixion, death, and burial. The difference between Lazarus' resurrection from the dead and Jesus' resurrection from the dead is that Lazarus would have to die again in order to enter eternal life. While Jesus, once risen, stays risen with a glorified body that transcends the earthly laws of gravity, space, and time, and being both physical, as being physical, yet is able to be present in a room with locked doors without having to knock on the door to have it open so we can enter. We may wonder, what is the official church teaching on what happens after our earthly bodies die? Are we dead until Judgment Day? Or do we immediately go to heaven, hell, or purgatory? Quoting from Jim Blackburn in an article he wrote for Catholic.com, although physical human bodies die, Human souls never die. The Catechism of the Catholic Church teaches that every spiritual soul is immortal. It does not perish when it separates from the body at death, and it will be reunited with the body at the final resurrection." Unquote. Imagine for a moment the joy that the suffering good thief on the cross on Calvary dying next to Jesus he must, have he must have experienced great joy when Jesus told him, today you will be with me in paradise. Now you and I always have the virtues of faith, hope, and humility to say to Jesus, forgive me, Lord, for I am a sinner. At the time of our death, may we hope to hear Jesus' voice instead of Satan's saying, you are mine. While we are still alive, may we take seriously the words from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans, who wrote, Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. You are in the Spirit. Only the Spirit of God dwells in you. If the Spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies, also through his Spirit dwelling in you. In our moments of grief, when we mourn the death of loved ones who truly loved Jesus and died and did their best to follow his commandments, we may say, as Martha and Mary more than likely said when their brother died a final time, we weep for ourselves, but we rejoice for him. Can't you imagine him saying that? This is what we must say too. May we praise God for the many signs and experiences that are embedded in nature and in our spiritual lives that speak of resurrection. For example, the springtime blooming of flowers from bushes that look dead during the seasons of fall and winter. The peace we experience in our souls when grace is restored in them after confessing the sins we committed whose consequences killed our joy. As Jesus has power to raise the dead to life, 
So he has the power to raise today's culture of death that wants our nation to turn his back on God. He can resurrect it to a culture of life after it repents for its sins and moral failures. The sexual revolution of the 60s and 70s has failed. Those of you old enough to remember that, you, you, you little ones don't remember that, you weren't born yet. So the sexual revolution of the 60s and 70s has failed. The Woodstock ideology of paganism, peace without God, and love without responsibility has failed. Its influence has left generations of families without fathers. The termination of newly conceived life in the womb in the millions. A rise in crime, violence, and suicide. Many depressed and directionless young people from both broken and intact families who have no desire to get a job or earn a living, yet every desire for entitlement and support from a government that seeks to control them. We have become in America a democratic nation whose public schools and universities are the key evangelizers of socialism. Schools that have replaced knowledge with ideologies. Real education, which we had at Pensacola Catholic High in 1991, those of you who are here from that class, there's one friend of mine who's here from 72. Um, uh, Catholic High would never really turn its students to socialism. So my message to the Catholic High School class of 1971, those present at this Mass, and to parishioners and visitors at this Mass as we hear the amazing gospel story of Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead is a message of concern and a message of hope. I focus, I focus first on the message of hope as I draw attention to Christ-centered ministries that bring a resurrection of hope to those they seek to serve in Jesus' name. Ministries like Magella House, named after St. Gerard Magella, as it seeks to provide a maternity home in Pensacola for women who are pregnant and homeless. As I mentioned earlier, our guests, Mary Beth and Ernie Sear, will be speaking about this mission and how we can be a part of it at the end of Mass. Another group, the efforts of Just Pensacola, which stands for Justice United Seeking Transformation in Pensacola, is a coalition of 17 congregations from 12 different faith traditions in Pensacola and surrounding areas of Escambia County that have come together to address root causes of community problems. This coalition seeks to bring a resurrection of hope for those seeking affordable housing and the reform of civil citations that would permanently become a record on first offenders who are juveniles, while also seeking to provide them with opportunities that teach them to make better choices. Other signs of actions of resurrection, there was a Christ-centered resurrection in the number of young families and individuals who are, who are rediscovering the beauty of the Catholic faith in the traditional Latin acts, discovering the beauty of the presence of our Lord in adoration of Jesus Christ and the Blessed Sacrament. And this enthusiasm is matched with their desire for their children to be taught in Orthodox, Catholic, and private schools that teach classical liberal, liberal arts education. These are some resurrections of hope there are many others. Now my message of concern to you is to wake up, if you haven't been woken up already, to what has been and is happening to transform our nation to socialism, as much of public and state-run education is indoctrinating our youth to turn their back on God. If you are part of the elite minority working hard to do this, well then, here's how you're doing it, you know. So I quote from Dr. Duke Pester, he's the Associate Professor of England, English at the University of Wisconsin, from an interview with Father Paul McTague, who facilitates a podcast called The Catholic Current. 
you'll hear me speak more and more about this podcast because I want you all to check it out and see what you think. And he said, in order to transform cultures away from liberty, freedom, and Christ into materialism, atheism, and socialism, you actually have to redefine history. You have to change the notion of objectivity and what is true or not. This kind of transformation requires exactly what organizations like the Cambridge Dictionary are doing with changing the definition of words. You take what you've known for thousands of years, what has been underwritten by science, what is objectively true and historically predictable, and these are my words, you replace these, this knowledge with the gender-driven ideologies that are faithful to a deceitful narrative. Back to the man's words, education has to become ideology because real education would never turn a kid to socialism. Same thing with the medical association, psychiatric association, and dictionaries working to redefine the words mother and father. My own thought. Do they really want us to refer as, to mothers as birthing, birthing peoples? Yuck. Yes, they want us to, to do that. Well, how ridiculous. Not going to happen. Not on my watch. I'll never do it. Those of you present today from the Catholic High School's class of 71 who know me will know that I am a child from a mixed marriage that was very inclusive. My father was a man. My mother was a woman. And I benefited very well as a result of this diversity. The gradual change of the definition of words is, is an effective strategy used to convince those without a true sense of our nation's history with its virtues and flaws to believe that everything we have known is racist, sexist, and bigoted. Jesus in today's gospel raises Lazarus from the dead so that he could experience truth as truth. Life as love. Affirmed in the one who raised from the dead his friend who loved him, who wept at his temporary death, and his Savior who redeemed him, his Lord and our Lord, Jesus Christ. He raised Lazarus to be part of the culture of life, which is Orthodox Christianity. This is, my friends, the true joy of the Easter we are preparing to celebrate. This is the true truth of resurrection that the spirit of the world wishes to censor and cancel. This is the person of Jesus Christ who gives us his body, blood, soul, and divinity to consume in the Eucharist so that we may have his life within us and rise on the last day. Stand up for special
dark moments of the Passover of his Son to the glory of his resurrection. For the Holy Church of God, that she may be defended from the snares of her enemies through the Spirit of Christ, who makes his home in her. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For all the peoples of this world, that they may be gathered into the Father's kingdom through the prayers and sacrifices of Christians in every nation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our For the dying, that they may pass peacefully and confidently through the gates of death to meet him who is the resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who mourn, that Christ who wept for Lazarus and friend may console them in their grief. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithful departed, that the Lord may unbind them and let them go free in the kingdom of his glory. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those in the medical community, for all of our first responders, for all of those in the military, and especially for their families, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers that we hold silently in our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, hear the prayers of your church. Bring forth to resurrection the people who trust in your promises. We ask this in Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice of yours be accepted to God and our mighty Father. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as true man he wept for Lazarus, his friend, and as eternal God raised him from the tomb, just as taking pity on the human race, he leads us by sacred mysteries to new life. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs 
in one chorus of exalted praise as we acclaim Holy. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of Faith. Partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. With the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Lord, we pray from every evil. Gracious
graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will. We live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I thank you for your patience and your the
pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. I'd like to invite my dear friends, Ernie, I'm very glad to see you, to speak about Magellan. So, welcome. No, we don't just want moms to have babies. We want to walk with our moms, and we want them to know that they are 
loved and supported. And this is the way to do it. So I hope you'll all support our ministry of Jailhouse. Most of all, pray for us, please. Thank you. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord.